Hello and welcome to Right Now for Tuesday the 14th of November 2017. I'm Tim Wilms. The results of the Australian Marriage Law Postal Survey are now only a day away in a sign that Conservatives are anticipating a yes result. An alternative same-sex marriage bill has been proposed by Conservative Liberal MPs headed by Senator James Patterson, which creates a separate institution of marriage for same-sex couples and allows for protections of conscientious subjectors who don't want to provide services for same-sex weddings. It also has a safe schools clause, which allows parents the right to withdraw their children from such programs. It is quite a lot to insert into the Marriage Act, and it's questionable whether it would have the ability to override various state anti-discrimination laws. Senator Dean Smith is proposing to introduce his own private members bill immediately following a yes outcome. It would appear that the battle over same-sex marriage certainly does not end with the results of this survey and a parliamentary showdown is to follow. Three new senators were sworn in yesterday after a count back to replace three of the four senators found ineligible by the High Court due to dual citizenship. Jordan Steele John and Andrew Bartlett replaced Green Senators Scott Ludlam and Larissa Waters. The replacement for National Fiona Nash, Liberal Holly Hughes, her appointment has been postponed as she has been referred to the High Court herself as she currently holds an Office of Profit under the Crown. However, the big story was the replacement for One Nation's Malcolm Roberts. Uh, Fraser Anning quit the party immediately after being sworn in. Apparently, Pauline Hanson wanted him to stand aside for Malcolm Roberts to return. This is quite a low political act by Anning to abandon the party that got him elected. If you do not feel you can serve your party, then you should quit the Senate completely, not defect and sit as an independent. Scott Ryan was elected the new Senate president to replace Stephen Perry, which will trigger a ministerial reshuffle in the near future. Meanwhile, Jackie Lambie is the latest senator to fall victim to Section 44 due to British citizenship by descent. New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinta Ardern continues to virtue signal on social justice issues. First, it was stating that climate change was the greatest challenge facing our generation. Now Ardern has decided to lecture Australia over the federal government's scheduled closure of the Manus Island Detention Centre, calling it unacceptable. She has reaffirmed her government's offer to take 150 of the men who were formerly at the detention centre and hasn't ruled out unilaterally dealing with the Papua New Guinean government who now have responsibility for the men. It is almost like New Zealand is going through a rerun of Australia in 2007 after the election of Kevin Rudd, and we know how that ended for us here, so New Zealand is in for a rough ride. United States President Donald Trump tweeted a response to North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, who called Trump old by stating that he would never call him short and fat and hope that they could still be friends. Of course, Trump's critics say that this is an immature insult, unbefitting of a president, and is dangerous given the current nuclear tensions between the two countries. However, people might like to look at the insults that Winston Churchill levelled at Adolf Hitler during World War II, which included calling him a bloodthirsty gutter snipe. Nobody would surely argue that uh, Churchill was an immature and unstatesmanlike leader. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe, and check back here tomorrow to see what is happening right now then. Bye.